In this lesson, we're going to go over self-inductance. We're going to solve some problems associated with it. So in this example, we have a current in a 25 millihenry inductor, and it changes from 12 amps to 27 amps in 125 milliseconds. So this is the electrical symbol for an inductor. And so we have a current that passes through it. What is the magnitude and direction of the induced EMF in the coil? So the formula that we need is this equation. The induced EMF is going to equal negative L times the change in current divided by the change in time. So we have L and we have the current. So we have everything that we need. L is 25 millihenries, which is basically 25 times 10 to the minus 3 henries. The change in current is going to be the final current, which is 27, minus the initial current, which is 12, divided by the change in time, which is 125 milliseconds, or 125 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. Now let's go ahead and get the answer. So the induced EMF is negative 3 volts. Now what is the direction of the induced EMF? Because the current increases, the induced EMF is negative. So what that means is that it opposes the direction of the original current. So anytime the current increases, the coil is going to generate a current that opposes the original current. So the induced EMF will be in the opposite direction, at least the current that is generated by the induced EMF. It's going to oppose the original current. The net effect is to decrease the voltage that this current has as it passes through the coil. So keep that in mind. Anytime the current increases, the induced EMF will be negative. If the current decreases, the induced EMF will be positive. So the inductor works in such a way that it tries to maintain a steady current. So if the current increases, it's going to try to decrease that current. If the current decreases, it's going to try to bring it back up. A 50 centimeter air filled solenoid with a diameter of 10 centimeters has 700 turns. Calculate the self inductance of this inductor. So let's draw a picture. So a solenoid is basically a bunch of coils of wire combined together. And so this is the length of the solenoid, and this represents the diameter of the solenoid. So let's calculate the area of the coil. So if the diameter is 10 centimeters, the radius of the coil is 5 centimeters. It's half of the diameter. Now we need to convert that to meters. So 5 divided by 100 is 0 0.05. So the area of the coil is going to be pi r squared. So that's pi times 0 0.05 squared. which is 7.854 times 10 to the minus 3 square meters. So that's the cross-sectional area. Now to calculate the self-inductance, we need to use this formula. It's equal to n, the number of turns, times the magnetic flux that passes through the coils, divided by the current that flows in the coil. Now the magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic field times the area. So we have N times B times A divided by I. Now the magnetic field created by a solenoid is mu zero N times I, where lowercase n represents the number of turns per unit meter or per unit length. So we can replace lowercase n with capital N, which represents the number of turns divided by the length of the solenoid. So let's replace B with this term. So far we have L which is equal to N times A divided by I and then separately I'm going to replace B with mu zero NI divided by L. So notice that the current can be cancelled in this particular problem. So 
So the self-inductance of the inductor is going to be mu0, and then n times n, that's n squared, times a, divided by l. So let's plug in everything that we have. So mu0 is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. And capital N is the number of turns, so that's 700 turns squared. And then we have the area is 7.854 times 10 to the minus 3 square meters. And then the length of the solenoid is 50 centimeters, which if you divide that by 100, that's 0.5 meters. So you should get 9.67 times 10 to the minus 3 henrys, which you can report your answer as 9.67 millihenrys. And so this is the answer. So now you know how to calculate the self-inductance of an inductor. So all you need to know is the number of turns, the length of the solenoid, and the cross-sectional area of the solenoid. So if you have the radius or the diameter, you can easily calculate A. Number three, a toroidal solenoid has 500 turns with a radius of 30 centimeters and square cross sections with side lengths of 5 centimeters. Calculate the self-inductance of this toroidal solenoid. So the self-inductance L is equal to the number of turns times the magnetic flux that passes through it divided by the current that passes through it. So as we said before, the magnetic flux is the magnetic field times the area. So we can write it as n times a divided by i times the strength of the magnetic field. Now the magnetic field of a toroidal solenoid is mu0 ni divided by 2 pi r. So I'm going to take this and substitute it in for b in this equation. So l is going to be na over i times mu0 ni divided by 2 pi r. So I can cancel I in this example. Therefore, the self-inductance is going to be mu0, and then we have n times n, which is n squared times the area, divided by 2 pi r. So let's draw a picture. So the toroidal solenoid is basically a solenoid with wires wrapped around a donut shaped material. It could be a donut shaped iron core. But we're going to assume this is an air filled toroidal solenoid since no material was specified. The radius of the solenoid is capital R. Now, what about the area, the cross sectional area? The cross sectional area is a square. And so if you were to like cut this piece, it would have a shape of a square. And so the side lengths of the square are 5 by 5 centimeters. So for this formula, it's going to be mu0 n squared. The area is going to be s times s, or s squared, divided by 2 pi r. So mu0 is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. n, the number of turns, that's 500. And then the area, that is the cross-sectional area of the solenoid, it's 5 centimeters times 5 centimeters, or 0 0.05 meters times 0 0.05 meters. And then we need to divide this by 2 pi r. So r is 30 centimeters, which is 0.3 meters. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So first, we could divide 4 pi by 2 pi, so it's 2. So this is going to be 2 times 10 to the minus 7 times 500 squared times 0 0.05 squared divided by 0.3. So the inductance in this example is 4.17 times 10 to the minus 4 henrys. So if we divide that by 10 to the minus 3, 
we can get the inductance in millihenries. So it's about 0.417 millihenries, or 417 microhenries, if you prefer that. And so that's the answer for this example.